Today, I'm gonna build a super powerful gaming PC. And since I'm an adult with bad spending habits, I decided to go all out for my first ever PC. But first, there's one big problem. I don't know anything about computers. So I started researching on how to build a PC and I had no idea what I got myself into. I was basically reading gibberish. But after many tutorials, a bit of luck, and an empty wallet, I was finally ready to start building. Although I didn't set a budget for this build, I wanted to put a major focus on the processor and graphics card for the best possible video game I mean, um, productivity performance. And so the build starts with a motherboard, which connects most of the components together. I chose the Asus ROG Crosshair 8 Dark Hero X570 because it should future-proof my PC for a while, and I thought it'd be funny to pick a board with the name that pretentious. <gasps> Free stickers, let's go! Okay, I'll keep it real, this thing looks high-tech, and my timbers were shivering just looking at it. That being said, I was also super pumped to get started. After setting the board on top of the box, the first step is the processor. This is an AMD Ryzen 9 5950X, which is one of the best CPUs available. Although it's small, the processor is actually one of the most important parts of a computer, and this CPU is going to be complete overkill for my system. Handling the CPU, you need to be extremely careful, holding it only by its edges, making sure not to damage the gold pins underneath. To install it, you need to unhinge this lever to access the CPU socket. Next, align the gold triangle on the CPU with the triangle on the motherboard. Then, without applying any pressure, you simply drop the CPU into the socket and let gravity work its magic. Hook the lever back into place, and just like that, boom, the CPU's installed. I thought this was going to be the scariest step, but that was kind of a breeze. A light air, one might say. Okay, it's not as bad as I thought. Alright, next up is the RAM. This is the popular Corsair Vengeance RGB Pro Slimline Edition. And yes, the rest of the part names are going to be just as long. I think 32 gigs should be plenty for a pleb like myself, but I can always get more later on. The RAM goes in these slots here, and since I only have two sticks, they're going in slots 2 and 4, so my PC can take advantage of dual channel RAM. Um, and I'm not even going to act like I know what I'm talking about, I'm just following instructions. To install, unlock the slots with these clips, and make sure to line up the notch in the RAM with the notch in the channel. The RAM can only go in one direction, so check beforehand to make sure you don't mess it up, knuckle. Head. Okay. Then just push down firmly until the RAM clicks into place. Once the RAM's secured, the next step is storage. There are a few different options for this, and I chose M.2 SSDs because they're small, light, and plug directly into the motherboard. Today, I have two terabytes of Samsung 980 Pro. To install, I unscrewed the faceplates covering the M.2 slots. SSDs can come in different sizes, so use the included plug adapters to fit your own needs. I insert the stick at a bit of an angle, press down on the SSD to screw it into place and reattach the faceplate. If the plate has a thermal pad, also make sure to peel off the protective film beforehand. Then I repeated the same process for my other SSD, and voila, I now have a stupid dumb amount of computer storage. And I was feeling pretty good at this point. If you've never built a PC before, I highly recommend it. It's honestly very satisfying. Adult Legos, as my friend put it. And now it's time to mount the motherboard. The case I went with is the Corsair 5000X. So after removing the side panels, I laid the case down on its side and located the mounting holes for the motherboard. Then I gently slid the board into place, making sure to line up the back I.O. with its opening. Finally, I used the included screws to secure the board in place. And now we've only got a couple more parts before this thing is an absolute unit. Alright, next up is the power supply. And as the name suggests, this is what powers the PC. I got an 850 watt PSU which should be more than enough for my computer. First, I followed a guide on which of the included cables to plug in beforehand. And this thing came with a lot, so I didn't end up using all of them, but I'll specify which ones I did use in a little bit. Next, I positioned the power supply at the bottom back of the case, making sure the fan was facing the dust filter. When mounting the PSU, it's important to tighten the screws in a crisscross pattern to ensure each corner is mounted with even pressure. Okay, now we move on to the CPU. Just like SSDs, there are a few different options for cooling. Air coolers, which use fans, liquid coolers, which circulate coolant around the case, and all-in-ones, which are kind of like an air-liquid hybrid. I went with the Corsair Elite Capellex AIO because it seemed like a happy medium, plus it was one of the prettiest coolers available. All right, first up, I had to attach the fans to the radiator. I decided to mount my radiator to the top of my case, so I made sure to attach the fans in a way to push air up and out as exhaust. Lucky for me, my specific case came with three fans already pre-installed for air intake on the front of the case. Once all the fans were mounted, it was time to attach the pump header to the CPU. The pump came with some pre-applied thermal paste, and after replacing the brackets to fit my motherboard, I attempted to mount the pump header. But, surprise surprise, I managed to mess that up. Ah, uh, no. So, I used some rubbing alcohol to clean off the pump header and CPU, and then I tried to apply some of my own thermal paste. Yeah, I had to buy some more thermal paste. I think I was a bit zealous with my application, and I probably used way too much, uh, but I wasn't going to go through that again, so I just carried on. 
And after a bit more struggling, I finally managed to screw the pump header in place. Thank God. I finished it off with a bit of aesthetic changes and then it was on to the big boy. Now for the star of the show, the graphics card. If you know anything about GPUs, you probably know that they're basically impossible to find right now. I got super lucky and was able to find not just any GPU, but the Asus TUF RTX 3080, which is basically like a GPU infinity stone. All right, no, that, that was a bad joke. Cut that, cut that. <laughs> to mount the GPU, first I needed to unscrew some of the back plates. Then I clipped the graphics card into the PCIe slot with a bit of pressure and secured the back with some screws. And just like that, the GPU is installed. At this point, everything is plugged in and all that's left is the cables. Coming from the power supply, I first connected the large 24 pin cable to the right side of the motherboard. Next up was the CPU cables, which plugged right into the top left corner. Then the PCIe cable, which plugs right into the GPU. In my case, I have two 8 pin connectors, so I made sure to occupy both of them. Finally, there were the case cables, which each went into their own respective spots at the bottom edge of the motherboard. I also plugged in all the fans, and a certain idiot forgot to record that part. And just like that, all of the parts were finally connected. It's kind of poetic in a sense. I spent a while on cable management, then finally plugged in the power connector for the moment of truth. It should work. If I turn this on, it should work. But... Ah, I'm so nervous! <laughs> <sighs> I know, I'm as surprised as you are. I didn't fuck it up. Let's go. All right, we're nearly there, stay with me. After plugging in my screen, keyboard, and mouse and spending way too long trying to set up Windows, I finally installed the OS and all of the necessary drivers. Then I ran a user benchmark test and this thing knocked my socks off. God damn. Oh my God, look at these numbers. And now I can finally fulfill my dream of becoming a pro gamer. Finally, I put the side panels back on and peeled the plastic to officially take this from a build to a build. 